All right, guys, welcome to today's video. For those that are new here, we take a look at the latest gaming industry news, rumors, and leaks. The timestamps are available in the description if you want to jump straight ahead to the bits that you're interested in, along with the links to the sites where the articles have come from. So let me ask you guys a question. Is it about time Square Enix abandoned their very close and snug relationship with Sony PlayStation and started to release all of their games on multiple platforms from day one? What do you think? Because for many years, Square Enix have released their games primarily on PlayStation or PlayStation first, although some of their games have eventually come to Xbox, is now the right time for Square Enix to start making games available on every platform from day one? What do you think? I say this because from a meeting last month in March, Square Enix have cancelled multiple projects. They lost over 22 billion yen and ended up closing down multiple game projects or reducing the size of those projects to much more smaller games. The article goes on to say that uh, Square Enix heavily indicated during a meeting on March 27th, of which only now details are being shared by the publisher. They go on to report that the Final Fantasy developer has cancelled or rescoped a number of currently unannounced projects. The company stated that it plans to revise the group's approach to the development of high-definition games, with the intention of being more selective and focused in the allocation of development resources. Following this, the publisher forecast content abandonment losses of 22.1 billion yen, which equates to about $141 million. This highly suggests that a number of games have either been rescoped or cancelled completely as Square Enix continues to adjust its strategy going forward. A few months back, the publisher revealed that it would be reviewing its development process to improve the overall quality of its output. Takashi Kiryu, chief executive officer at Square Enix, had the following to say during an inventory call back in January. He goes on to say, I want to structure our development function so that we're able to ensure higher quality from each each title by slimming down our lineup. We've tried to produce hits by developing a wide variety of titles rather than focusing only on certain ones. I believe that this has resulted in the splintering of our resource pool, which sounds about right. I mean, if you're focusing on so many different games and a wide variety of games, you, you are going to spray and it sounds like they have been spraying. But if they focus and narrow down that focus and get it laser sharp, the chances are you may have a really big hit if you pull all your resources together on one project or two projects. Uh, but there's also a bigger risk but they also you know if they if they prefer to release games like final fantasy for example if they release the final fantasy franchise solely on the playstation up until recently this was the only place where you can play final fantasy although recently both square enix and xbox have announced that final fantasy will be available on the xbox platform it does make you wonder that if the final fantasy games were made available on multiple platforms this would surely help them financially to plug the shortfall in their budget surely that's the thinking going on behind the scenes higher up right and the other thing, of course, goes without saying, closer management control of the studios developing their games. I mean, $141 million is a lot of money to have just squandered or wasted or have lost. Some of that will be over forecasting and underperforming sales, but some of that will be studio waste as well, which they need to manage closely to move forward. What do you think, guys? Should all Square Enix games come to every platform from day one? Let me know down below in the comment section. Let's move on. I find this unbelievable, as I thought the next game would have done extremely well from what I I've read and, and the kind of the hype and the you know the euphoria surrounding the game but uh, despite the love it received from core gamers and critics Remedy's recent effort developing Alan Wake 2 has yet to make back its development and marketing budget which to me sounds absolutely crazy cannot believe the game hasn't made back its development cost right now this surprising situation has plenty of contributing factors but the reality is that sales are very slow no doubt the holding company Tencent which is the largest video game company in the world in in terms of ownership and owning all these studios, they have increased their stake in Remedy, the Finnish developer, from 5% up to 15%, securing additional shares and voting rights. They seem to have worked out quite well for Tencent. According to Remedy's financial statement for the first quarter of 2024, which reveals that Alan Wake 2 sold only 1.2 million copies, and that was as of February 2024, and that revenue from the game has yet to make back development and marketing costs. In March, Remedy claimed it had recouped most of its investment, but the final number still remains unknown. In addition, the Finnish developer admits to a 22% decrease in revenue in its final tally for 2023. Astonishing, really. Some of this makes me wonder, you know, is this the kind of post-COVID effect where all these companies are still comparing their figures to the end of 2022, right? So, you know, 2021, 2022, even uh, kind of mid-2020, all these people, all the gamers, and even people who don't game, they were all buying games, playing games, enjoying themselves. Everyone was cooped up at home. If you're still going to keep comparing figures to the previous year, surely you are going to be 
down? Of course you are, because everyone's gone back to work, right? So naturally the sales will decline. It'd be interesting to see what the figures are going to be like next year when you compare it to this year. You'd expect it to be up. And if it's not, then there's a problem. I mean, spotted by uh, gamesindustry.biz, tech conglomerate Tencent sees the opportunity to acquire more shares in the studio, increasing the company's influence. Future games for Remedy that are currently known in their pipeline include Control 2 and the remakes of the first two Max Payne games, 1 and 2. Discussed on yesterday's video, so if you want to have a, uh, a gander at that, do so. It's on my uh, video section. I mean, I really can't understand why Alan Wake 2 sales numbers are so low. The first game was a classic and I thought the hype for the game was really high, but unfortunately hype doesn't materialize into sales. It just feels like it's going to be one of those kind of games where it proves to be a massive critical hit. However, the numbers will always be maybe low and maybe it'll find some kind of resurgence if and when it drops into Game Pass and PlayStation Plus, probably towards the end of this year or very early next year. Okay, moving right along. Are we going to see the biggest ever Xbox showcase this June with multiple new games that are going to be announced along with the release dates of some major exclusive games coming to the Xbox platform and how many of those so-called exclusive games will actually turn out not to be exclusive and end up on PlayStation or Nintendo maybe 12 months from now or 18 months from now. So Microsoft has announced that it will be hosting its Xbox Games Showcase on June the 9th 2024 so it's not too far away with Microsoft's push towards more and more multi-platform titles it's all but guaranteed surely that we'll see some games that will inevitably end up on the PlayStation platform during the Microsoft Xbox Showcase. On the Xbox blog it goes on to say that this will be our first showcase featuring games from our portfolio of studios across Activision, Blizzard, Bethesda and Xbox Game Studios in addition to titles from our third party partners. Microsoft Xbox Showcase starts on Sunday the 9th of June that's 10 a.m pacific time 1 p.m eastern time and 6 p.m over here british summer time summer games fest also begins on the 7th of june so the xbox event fits in quite nicely over that weekend the event is followed by uh, the ubisoft forward on the 10th of june according to gaming insider tom warren and editor at the verge he goes on to say this will be the first xbox showcase featuring games across activision blizzard bethesda and microsoft game studios i understand microsoft is currently planning to announce a new gears of war game during the show. The showcase will also include several release dates for upcoming Xbox games like Microsoft Flight Simulator 2024, Avowed, Indiana Jones and The Great Circle. We are likely to get a date on when the big Shattered Space expansion is coming to Starfield. Todd Howard recently revealed it's due in the fall and I understand Bethesda is currently targeting a September release date for that. Activision is targeting the next Call of Duty for late October with Avowed and Microsoft Flight Simulator 2024 likely to follow in November. And Indiana Jones in December. So that is an absolutely packed end of the year for Microsoft, along with the third party games that are also coming to the platform and games that we currently do not know anything about. So I understand Microsoft have a lot of games to show this year, more than the 2023 showcase. So it should be quite an, of an action packed showcase. We should expect to hear how the 2025 lineup is looking with some launch dates for the anticipated Xbox games. Sony has yet to confirm its own showcase, but it's rumored to be happening in May. So with Microsoft confirming its showcase for June the 9th and the Game Fest kicking off the summer of gaming on June the 7th, we really need Sony to come to the party with its own showcase and show us what's happening for the remainder of 2024 and then looking forward to 2025 and 2026. I've got two schools of thought here. Either Sony go first and do a showcase in May or they hold the line, wait for Microsoft to show what they are planning on releasing at their event and then hold a PlayStation showcase sometime a week or two later. What do you think? When would be a good time for Sony to announce a PlayStation showcase? So my question originally, is this going to be the biggest Xbox showcase that we've ever had? I think it might actually be, you know, I think the 2023 showcase was pretty good. So if Microsoft and Xbox can get anywhere close to that, then I think I think we'll have a good show, which is what we want to see, right? We want to see a good Xbox showcase and we want to see Sony PlayStation go out and do better. That's what we want, don't we? Let me know your thoughts down below in the comment section about today's topics. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you on the next video.